Welcome to the wild, sneaky world of the herpes simplex virus, or HSV, as we call it in the medical biz. This is no ordinary virus. It's a master of disguise, lurking in your body, sometimes for years, without a single clue. But here's the kicker, what if I told you it could strike when you least expect it, leaving blisters, pain, and mystery in its wake? Stick with me, because today, I'm peeling back the curtain on this silent invader. You won't believe where it hides or how it spreads. Let's dive in. Picture this, a virus so stealthy, it can slip from one person to another without a single symptom. That's HSV's superpower. Most of the time, it's like a ghost, silent, invisible, moving through populations like a whisper. But when it decides to show up, oh boy, it's a party you didn't RSVP for. HSV comes in two flavors, HSV-1 and HSV-2. Both belong to the herpes verity family. Think of it as a gang of double-stranded DNA viruses wrapped in a sneaky envelope. Now, HSV, one loves to crash the party above the waist. Think mouth, lips, tongue. HSV-2, it's got a thing for below-the-waist genitals, mostly. But here's the twist, they're not picky. Either one can show up anywhere, like uninvited guests. And trust me, they don't play by the rules. So, how does this virus pull off its sneaky tricks? When HSV lands on a new host, say, through a tiny crack in your skin or mucous membranes, it latches onto epithelial cell receptors like a key fitting a lock. Once inside, it hijacks the cell's machinery, kicking off the lytic cycle. This is where things get wild. The virus's DNA gets transcribed, translated, and churns out new viral proteins, building an army of baby viruses that burst out to infect nearby cells. It's like a viral factory working overtime. But here's where HSV gets really clever. It doesn't just stop at skin cells. It sneaks into nearby sensory neurons, traveling up their axons to their cell bodies. For your face, that's the trigeminal nuclei. For your genitals, the sacral nuclei. And once it's there, it's home for life. That's right, HSV sets up camp in your neurons, lying dormant in a latent cycle, waiting for the perfect moment to strike again. What triggers it? Stress, a cold, even a bad sunburn, any of these could wake this sleeping giant. When HSV wakes up, it sends viral particles back down the neuron's axon, ready to infect your skin again. Since those neurons only serve one side of your body, the blisters and sores pop up on the same side. Think one-sided lip sores or genital lesions. And here's the creepy part. It can keep doing this forever. Every time it reactivates, it's like a viral encore and you didn't even ask for the show. Now let's talk symptoms or the lack thereof. Most HSV infections are asymptomatic, meaning you might never know you're hosting this virus. But when it does show its face, it's usually in the form of painful, fluid-filled blisters. For oral herpes, think clusters of sores on your lips, tongue, or gums, often with a fever or swollen lymph nodes. Kids get hit hardest with primary infections, but adults? You might just get a sore throat or a few blisters at the lip's edge. But wait, what about below the waist? Genital herpes can bring ulcers and pustules on the labia, penis, or cervix. And just like oral herpes, reactivations are usually milder or completely silent. HSV doesn't stop at the mouth or genitals. Ever heard of herpetic whitlow? That's when it attacks your fingertip or nail bed, ouch. It's common if you touch an active lesion and then, say, rub your eye or another body part. That's called auto-inoculation, spreading the virus to new spots on your own body. Wrestlers, with all that skin-to-skin -skin contact, can get herpes gladiatorum, with sores popping up on their trunk or arms. And if you've got burns or eczema, watch out, HSV can turn those into a nightmare called eczema herpeticum. Here's where things get scarier. HSV can invade your eyes, causing keratoconjunctivitis. You'll feel pain, redness, tearing, and maybe blurry vision. The telltale sign? A branching, tree-like lesion on your cornea, classic HSV. But it gets worse. In rare cases, HSV can sneak into your brain, causing meningitis or encephalitis, especially in the temporal lobe. 
This can happen to anyone, but it's more common during reactivations when the virus hitches a ride in your bloodstream. If you're unlucky, a lumbar puncture might show red flags like extra red blood cells or high protein levels. One of the most heartbreaking ways HSV spreads is from mother to baby during delivery, not in the womb, but as the baby passes through infected vaginal secretions. Neonatal HSV is a triple threat, one-third get skin, eye, or mucous membrane infections, one-third get central nervous system issues like seizures, and one-third face disseminated infection, where the virus attacks organs like the heart or brain. Without treatment, this can be deadly. Now, let's talk about the heroes of this story, antivirals like acyclovir, famcyclovir, and valacyclovir. These drugs can't kick HSV out of your body, but they can tame it, reducing pain and speeding healing. The trick? Start them early, ideally during the prodrome, that tingling sensation before blisters appear. For severe cases, like encephalitis or neonatal infections, high-dose 4 antivirals are the go-to. But what about those who are immunocompromised? They face more frequent, nastier reactivations, with lesions popping up in places like the esophagus or lungs. Diagnosing HSV is usually a matter of spotting those telltale lesions. But to be sure, we've got tests like PCR to detect viral DNA, antibody tests, or viral cultures. These are especially crucial for tricky cases, like when HSV hits the brain or eyes. And here's a fun fact. Even without treatment, most HSV infections clear up in a couple of weeks. But why wait when we've got antivirals to make life easier? So, there you have it, the sneaky, shape-shifting world of HSV. It's a virus that plays hide-and-seek for life, popping up when you least expect it. From cold sores to genital lesions, from wrestlers to newborns, HSV doesn't discriminate. But here's the big question. Could you be carrying this virus right now and not even know it? Stay curious, stay healthy, and if you love this deep dive, smash that subscribe button and share this video with your friends. Dr. Daisy's got more medical mysteries coming your way.